a particle moves through a vector field F. Now, how many people watched the 16-1 video? Hopefully everybody. OK, so you know what a vector field is. It's like a corn field, except it's full of vectors instead of corn. Right? Um, a particle moves through a vector field F. It could be a force field, right? You've heard that term in science fiction. Force fields are real. Um, science fiction gets all its cool terms from physics and math. Um, a force field is a real thing. So imagine the length of each vector representing a force. It could be a force in newtons or pounds or something. A particle moves through a, a vector field, a force field, a, a F, along a path C. Think of C as the path that it travels. What does the following integral represent? So it's a line integral. The integral over C of F dotted with T ds. Oh, wait. What does T stand for? The unit tangent vector. Now, we need to interpret the physical meaning of this thing. That's really what I'm asking. What does this mean physically? That's what we want to do. We want to dissect this symbolism. So first off, remember the dot product formula for force. Remember that? Or for work, really, is what I meant to say. Work, it involves a dot product, though. And it involves a force. Work is equal to the force vector dotted with, we call it D, right? F dot D, remember that? It's been a while. Well, if you realize that T times DS is your distance vector D here, and F is your force vector, we've got F dotted with TDS, it's got to be work. Right away, you arrive at it if you remember the dot product definition of work. So I would call F dot T DS, I would call that a work element. And what's doing the work here? The vector field, the force. The force is doing the work. So what does the integral in front of that force? So really, when I say work element, I mean an infinitesimally small piece of work done on an interval associated with that, you know, that piece of the curve right there. I'm not going to, you know, you could imagine breaking up the curve into intervals like I did earlier, but I'm not going to waste time with that. So what does the sum of all such values do? All such f dot t ds's. It gives you the total work done by the force, the vector field, in moving the particle from point A to point B. So that's, that's how we're developing the idea of the line integral with respect to a vector field. But as you'll see later on, it doesn't have to represent work if f is not a force field. So let's go down here and define it. The line integral with respect to the vector field, we're just going to leave it at that. That's going to be the, the generic heading here. Um, and it's given by the integral uh, over C of f dot t ds, where t is the unit tangent vector. And that's for, that formula is great for a um, symbolic representation, but it doesn't help us evaluate. It's not, a, it's not a calculation formula. So let's see if from this definition we can develop a calculation formula. All right, so... The calculation formula always surrounds a parameterization. So you have a curve C, you parameterize it. And then uh, you get some R of T, and then T going from um, little a generates, when you plug it in, R. R of little a is the beginning point, capital A. And T ends at B. R of little b is the, is, is the point in space or in the plane capital B. So A generates the beginning point of the parameterization. Uh, T equals A generates the beginning point. T equals B represents the end point. And those give you the limits of integration ultimately. So when we actually parameterize this thing, then, oh, hmm, what does that mean? Well, that means we write the integral, and when we parameterize it in terms of T, it's going to become the integral from A to B. F is going to be written in terms of T. So how do you do that? Well, you, you figure out, you know, R of T. R of T is X of T comma Y of T comma Z of T if there's three components. And so, oh, F then you stick in whatever the parameterization gives you for X in terms of T. So F becomes, F of, F of X, Y, Z becomes F of X of T, Y of T, Z of T in the calculation formula. And I, I usually don't write that much. I usually just write F, and it's understood that it's in terms of T 
when you write the integral in terms of little t, little t, right? Little t, not big t. And then, oh, uh, t, do you remember what t is? The, really the, the working formula for t, the first definition we had in terms of r? It's r prime of t divided by its magnitude, right? That's what's going to give you the unit vector in the direction of motion. But then from above, what was ds? Magnitude r prime of t dt. Do you see a nice cancellation coming? Yeah? So the one of the calculation formulas we can use for calculating the line integral over a vector field, or sometimes I'll say the line integral with respect to a vector field, as the heading indicates, is f dotted with r prime of t, with the understanding that f is in terms of t. And then the dt is still there. So that's, that's a nice calculation formula. And then uh, you'll, you'll also see this notation. The integral over C, maybe I should have done this one first, of F dot dr. I, don't, I use this just to represent the line integral usually, symbolically. So why would that be a notation that we would use? Well, what was dr dt? When we use Leibniz notation to represent the derivative of the vector valued function with respect to t, what's the alt okay, what's the prime notation say? So Leibniz notation, prime notation, right? dr dt is r prime of t. One, they both say the same thing. If we play with the differentials, we know the differential dt will behave algebraically and think of it like we're multiplying both sides by dt we get that really this dr could be thought of as a vector differential, right? So really it would, I mean, if you think about what that must represent symbolically, it must represent something really weird. dx, dy, dz, not a, not a real vector, right? It's a vector of differentials. That's what it is. And we're kind of defining that here, but it makes sense with the notation we've learned in the past. So dr must mean r prime of t dt, and dr must be a vector of, of full of differentials, which is, what does that even mean, right? It's a, it's a useful piece of notation. That's what it means, okay? That's what it breaks down to. And, and you'll see why it, it's useful um, in this section, actually. Notes, number one, when integrating over a vector field, the orientation of c matters. Why would that be? Well, because the unit tangent vector in the direction of motion switches directions if the orientation is the opposite direction. So what do you do to switch the direction of a vector? You, you multiply it by negative one. And you can pull that negative out front. And symbolically, that's kind of what we're trying to represent down here. If you end up integrating over the opposite of whatever parameterization you have, negative c, we notate that as, f dot dr, then you could just integrate over c. This is what this is telling you. You could just integrate over c and then take the opposite of that integral. 